Holy crap. <laughs> Okay, so you're here to see what prop and motor combination gives you the most power, which I want to know also. But before we start spinning things, I want to walk you through my journey as to where I am at and how I got here. Okay, so I started off with this QX90, Ishin makes it, and it is like a gateway drug to FPV. Oh my gosh. This size is just an awesome way to learn and fly FPVs. I started with that, flew it around a bunch, crashed a lot and was thinking to myself, hmm, I'm gonna need new props pretty soon because I went through the first set of props very quickly. So I jumped online, looked around and said, what is a better prop? Because surely these come stock. Nothing ever comes stock that's like the best possible option. I looked around and people were talking and saying great things about these Ladybird props. You can see them over here. I bought a lot of them without even really testing them out because hey, no one online says anything that's not true, right? <laughs> So um, I got a bunch of those in, I put them on, they flew great. I was immediately like, okay, cool, yeah, these are obviously better. Um, and then I started digging around some more and then people were saying that these Parrot props were bigger and provided more thrust and were more powerful, but they had problems fitting them on the QX90 frame. But before I got these in, I went ahead and started designing my own frame, which is very close to the same size as the QX90, but it's a little bit bigger and would accommodate the Parrot props and it accommodates my design mentality of keeping things nice and tidy, um, keeping wires hidden. Um, the wires go from the motor straight into the arm and then pop back out where the flight controller is. This is just a much cleaner design. Um, so then I started burning out motors on the QX90 because I was flying so much. So then I, went, I hopped back online, started looking around and people were saying these Spintech motors were the bee's knees. So of course I went ahead and ordered some of those. So the Spintech motors are installed in this frame right now with the Ladybird props. Um, and I started thinking to myself, hmm, these are pretty expensive. And these motor stock motors did pretty good, but they burned out after a while. I wonder if there's like a happy in between where I can buy cheaper motors that are about as powerful with a good prop combination and I don't have to spend the money on the Spintechs. So with that mentality, I found these on Amazon, ordered them, Hubson X4 replacement motors so they're the same 8.5 diameter cans um, and so now I have all these various parts and combos and motors and props and I want to figure out what is the best combination of prop and motor to give me the most thrust so I designed and 3d printed this little test fixture it's basically and it's kind of funny I used these uh, dead burned out motors from the QX90 as my bearings for the arm and then I just ran a wire through the bottom, up to the top, and then out so I can I don't have to solder anything. I just slide the motor in and then push the wires from the motor leads into this little um, JST connector to the center of the motor, to the center of the, the pivot, and from the center of the pivot to where I have this um, uh, nut touching the, the scale, they're the exact same length. Now that way I get the same force onto the scale. I'll definitely have the models down below on Thingiverse so you can print this off, make your own. It's really easy to print and it, it does a great job giving you solid numbers that are repeatable. Once I did all that then I had a problem of okay so I've got this F3 Evo Micro brushed controller so when you punch the the throttle on the Tyrannus depending on the orientation of the board you'll get more or less power each time. If you just plug in a battery to this plug their motor in and then punch it, the motor output is gonna be different each time you do it depending on how the board's oriented. I needed a way to get past that. So then I found out that I could use a um, USB to go, I think is what this is called. It'll plug into my smartphone. I've got a Samsung. And uh, then from there, I go just a normal micro USB and plug it into the flight controller. And there's an app on my phone that I'll put down and the links below that you can use. I know it works on Android. I don't know if it works on Apple or not, uh, but it allows me to go in and just like a uh, beta flight on the PC, you can isolate a single motor. So I've got motor two hooked up, solder right here, and I can just drag a slider and it gives it max power. And there's no flight controller trying to say, oh wait, no, cut back some power because you're not level. It just straight up 
gives it full power and for as long as you want and then you can slide it down. So that's what my setup is. This is the best way to do it. And I would recommend if you're trying to, to do this for yourself as well, you follow this procedure because I've spent a lot of time uh, doing it and not really liking that I didn't get uh, consistent results. And now I've found a way that, I mean, this, this works really well. It's very consistent. Okay, so let's, without further ado, test the stock QX90 motor with the stock QX90 prop. And we're gonna see how much the rest it puts out. All right, so let's go into the easy GUI ground station. We'll connect. Angle is on. Put a battery in. Let's see here. 4.2 volts, one cell. We'll go into the motors. We'll select motor two. All right, now I'm going to select yes, I enable and understand the risks. <laughs> 18.9 grams. That's pretty impressive. All right, we'll do it two more times. 18.7 I saw 18.7 right there at the end so that's a pretty daggum good number so let's pull this prop off so a QX90 motor with the ladybird prop I saw 15.1 15.1 15 15.1 15 for all three runs on the ladybird props we'll grab one of these parrot props. These things are beastly. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> are you kidding me? It moved the test stand. So much thrust. 24.2 grams. <laughs> yes. Okay, so to save you some time, we'll just jump to the end and look at the comparison between all the motors and all the props. The takeaways I got from this chart basically show that the QX90 or Hubson props do a better job than the Ladybird props, which was surprising to me. And then of course, the Parrot props, regardless of the motor, put out more power. Now it's interesting because Spintech is consistently more powerful than any of the other motors but it's actually pretty close to the Hubson X4 replacement and the price difference is quite large. So if you're willing to drop some mad cash for every little gram of performance, then Spintex are for you. But if you're on a budget and you want to get the best performance possible, I would suggest getting the Hubson X4 motors with a Parrot prop. One more interesting aspect to take a look at when you're pairing props with motors is the length of the motor shaft. You can see here that the QX90 has the longest motor shaft and that can cause some problems if the propeller you install doesn't touch the can. So with the QX90 prop on the QX90 motor, you can see that there's still a little bit of gap and when you crash, this can push the back of the motor out, which is no good. Taking that same prop and moving it over to the Hubson motor shows a good example of how it should sit. You want the prop to be hitting the can without a gap. And moving the same prop over again to the Spintech motor shows that it also fits well and doesn't risk damaging the motor. The Ladybird props are the worst and don't seat down on even the shortest motor shaft. And the Parrot props fully seat even on the longest shaft. If you want to be a thrust master, you're going to use these Parrot props with whatever motor you've got. Well, that about wraps up my micro motor comparo. I've compiled the information over here for you to take a look at. Now I've got a couple more tests that I want to do outside actually flying. I kept saying, well, this one proper motor combo has good thrust, but it might have different flight characteristics. So I've got a couple more tests to test out what it actually means when you're flying and how it feels when you're doing FPV. So there might be a disconnect from bench testing to actually flying. And I want to figure out if there is and what it is. I've got some plans to test that out. Make sure and subscribe to my channel because then you'll get updated whenever I'm posting new videos that give you more information. Also, if this was helpful, if you learned something, click the like button. That helps me. All right, guys. I will see you next time.